Right, now, whenever I talk to people about school stuff, embarrassing nicknames always seems... Our school was... We never had... You know, like, some schools have got really imaginative nicknames, and ours was just Jonesy, Higsy. It was... <laughs> everybody was just a Y on the end. <laughs> Roisin, did you have a nickname? Yes. I had a teacher called Mr Arch, and he used to say, uh, Roshan, because I talked a lot. And... Roshan? <laughs> yeah, so he said, uh, Roshan. Mm. And then... <laughs> so everyone started saying, uh, Roshan to him, and it became a nickname that everyone would just call me, uh, Roshan. And then he added to the nickname, because then he said to me, uh, Roshan, do I have to put up this every time I walk into a classroom? <laughs> and that became the nickname. <laughs> <laughs> what is it again? Uh, so, uh, so my friends called me uh, Roshan. Do I have to put up with this every time I walk into a classroom? <laughs> <laughs> Richard, you Dicky, Ricardo? No. Um, in order to have a nickname, I feel people need to know your original name <laughs> to vary it. I was often just you, but no specific nickname. I think you need to be uh, held in some kind of affection yeah, for a nickname. It. Sally, did you have a nickname? I did. I was called Deadfish. The smell? Or was I, it... Thought it, I thought it was because I smelled. No. So I used a lot of those 80s perfumes, Charlie, uh, Impulse. We had the brute, the high karate, the mascot. No. Everything. There's a mate of mine who carried a bottle of Yardley gold in his <laughs> jacket pocket at all times. In case he needed to send up. In case he needed to send up. <laughs> so, Sally, why, why were you caught? Well, it turned out it wasn't because I smelled. I found this out uh, a few years later. It was just because I was extremely boring. <laughs> The relief. <laughs> the relief you must have felt that yeah. it was just that you were shit boring. <laughs> that is so tragic, though. So, after school... I mean, there was no after school for you, Sally, I know. But, Richard, you, you presumably yes. had, had a, a time that was called after school. Well, where I lived was um, being built um, quite rapidly. It was outside of Ipswich, about ten clicks west of Ipswich. <laughs> and um, west. it was a building site, and so I went round collecting lead um, and I would melt the lead to uh, make figures. Make, make kind of figures with. And, you know, people say lead is poisonous and it's bad Some people... for brain development and it can lead to developmental problems or that you might be uh, odd or isolated. I didn't find that. Um, I, 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 I felt that it was my choice not to associate with others. It was my choice not to be able to start conversations. And my temper tantrums and rages were my choice. <laughs> were my choice. I fainted because I wanted to faint. Were so, the builders there? Of course, no, they stop at three. This is the country. <laughs> well, are they there? They're not there now. Is that your main there? question, Roisin? <laughs> were the builders the on site at the time? Did you manage to source good policy builders? Do you have their number? Of course oh. they weren't there. <laughs> Sally, what were you doing after school then? I mean, does um, sound pretty bleak. At one stage, I became a kind of fortune teller where I used to lounge about on my bed in my cubicle and invite people in and tell their fortunes <laughs> with the Bible. I'm going to have to ask you, uh, Sally, to demonstrate your Bible-based fortune So I'd say, come in, come into, my, come into my boudoir, Rod. So then I'd, give, I'd say, you can have a number... Uh, 901, please, Sally. OK, 901. OK, this is, this is good. So give me a number between 1 and 14. Pressure. Six. Six. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So you're going to become very, very unwhelled. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how does that...? Yeah, and you just need not to be upset about it. <laughs> Was it always bad You're news you were giving people? Off. No, sometimes it was challenging. It was things like, you know, you'd end up with the measurements of the arc, like, you will be 300 cubits by 300 <laughs> cubits. OK, you're going to be putting on a bit of weight, and the way you need to deal with that is, uh, you know, play them all across. Right. I've got that to choose way. which of... Uh, which of your little uh, snippets and stories I'm going to put in the box. I think it's got to be Sally and her Bible. I think it's my Bible. Be... That's not embarrassing. Mystic That's Meg. cool. She's like the girl in an indie nineties <laughs> film. Like, it's not cigarette. You want to know the future? <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting it in, Sally, Roush, and Richard. I've made my decision. Okay. This right. is a little Bible there. That represents your Bible-based fortune telling. I really like that. In your boudoir. That has uh, gone in, uh, Sally.